Hello everybody, I'm Dan. Welcome to my Java tutorial series. Throughout my tutorials I will teach you Java using just Notepad and the command prompt. The order in which my tutorials are organized on both my website at javacjava.com and my YouTube playlist is designed to maximize learning by building on concepts from prior tutorials. This tutorial is about the value of method inside of the string class. I'm going to open up my web browser to my website javacjava.com and select begin. Let's scroll down my tutorial list to the string value of method tutorial. So basically, there is the value of method is overloaded nine different times. So we got these various different parameter types we can throw in there. So primitive type boolean char. Uh, we can also throw in a, a char array, a character array there. Um, we can throw in a character array with two more parameters, offset and count. Now offset is basically where to start the um, start the array in the array where to start off like zero would be the very first index right so if you wanted like say the first three characters you could do zero for the offset and three for the count right and so uh, we also have a double float int long and then an object um, type that we can pass in there that's another interesting one now you'll notice each one of these methods right return back a string value and um, they are also public and static. Now the static is not on very many of the methods in the string class, although I wish it was. It would make life a lot easier, in my opinion. But um, that will, if you haven't watched my tutorial yet on uh, static methods, I highly recommend watching that too, but you probably get most of it here, but it's definitely, you'll learn a lot more about it there. But um, that'll basically allow us to directly invoke this method here instead of having to create an instance. But, Okay, let me uh, just start, start going through this here. So the value of method is a great, the value of method is a great tool for converting primitive data types and character arrays into string values. The value of method is overloaded and has nine different signatures. I will use each of the various flavors of this method in the code example, but I will explain how it works using the value of, and then with the parameter int i, overload. All of the value of overloaded methods are static. Now a static method can be directly invoked without creating an instance by using the class name dot method name syntax. You can create, you can if you want, create an instance of the class string to invoke the method if you like, but it is much easier to get the return value by invoking the method directly. This is what I like so much about this one here. And this will make sense here in just a moment. So, um, I've got in the first statement here, I'm initializing a int two variables, a and b, both int data types, one to 956 and the other to 1045. And now in the second statement, I'm basically setting this, this variable here, title. It's a string type, right? And I'm setting that equal to, and then here's where, where the static comes in. We can, this is a string, the string class, right? Same thing as a string object and we can directly invoke it by using the dot operator and calling the value of method right here, right? And then passing in a plus b. a plus b, by the way, is 2001. So this particular whole thing right back here will return um, a string, right, of literally like double quotes, 2001, double quotes, and then we'll be um, using the concatenation concatenation operator plus and then adding it to this string literal right here uh, you know colon a space odyssey so when we when we print this to the console title right it'll say 2001 a space odyssey so let's come down here and go ahead and highlight all this stuff and go through all these methods one by one here let's go control c to copy or right click and select copy um, i'm going to move my browser off screen here and I've got a shortcut to the command prompt on my desktop, but if you don't, you can create one really easy by right-clicking and selecting new shortcut, type in CMD, next, and finish. Okay, let's go ahead and open this up. First thing I'm going to do is type in Java C, which is the Java compiler command, and press enter. You should see all this stuff scroll by. Now, if you get an error message, go ahead and watch my tutorial on installing the Java development kit. You want to make sure you get that installed and configured properly before continuing. CLS to clear the screen, cd space backslash, cd is short for change directory, and backslash tells it to go to the root. I'm going to make a directory called Java using the md command. And I already have it, but if you don't, it'll create it for you. 
I'm going to make another directory called uh, string value of. And I'm going to change directories to that folder here. <clears throat> I'm going to notepad string value of dot java. String value of dot java is going to be the name of my source code file, also known as my compilation unit. Okay, let's go ahead and paste that in there with control V, or you can right click and select paste. And come up here and save it. All right, so the f the first um, first three statements here are exactly what we talked about up here. So let's go ahead and just come back here. Let's clear our screen, Java C, and pass it the argument of the name of the file that we want to compile, which is this file here, and then Java to invoke the Java Virtual Machine, and we want to uh, invoke the string of string value of class there. Okay, so. On the first thing displayed to the console is 2001 of Space Odyssey. So exactly what we went over there, right? Um, string value of return back 2001, and then I just uh, you know, added those two together. Or use the concat concatenation operator there. So, and now here I've uh, just basically initialized some uh, boolean t equals true. A char upper a equals 65. Remember, a char data type can you can assign that to a numeric value. Um, and then here is a, uh, a char array. I'm initializing that to this va these values right in here, right? Um, and then a double value, a, a float, and a long value. Okay, and then I'm just using this string temp, right? Temp will just basically be used to keep on assigning the value of and then displaying it there, right? So the first thing I'm going to just do is just do call string dot value of. Remember, string is the name of the class using the dot operator to invoke the value of method. And we can do this because the value of method is um, is static, right? And uh, otherwise, we'd have to create an instance. So when we come down here, you can see that's true. Um, now, what I mean by that is I don't want to confuse anybody, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to Say okay. What if we were? What if it wasn't static? What will we have to do in that particular case? Right. In that particular case, we'd have to say like, um, <clears throat> like something like string blah equals new string, right? And then blah equals blah dot. value of t, right? And then, you know, system dot out dot print line, blah. So something like this, right? That's creating an instance of a new string and then using that, so we've got this reference variable which holds the reference to a new string type, right? And then um, we're assigning that using that reference to invoke it, right? Which is, would be if it was a non-static, this is what we'd have to do. Okay, so let me save this. We'll come up here, clear the screen, recompile this, rerun it. Right, so you can see we've got true and true displayed. And that's why I say, and this is why I like this so much better. And if a lot of the other methods in the string class were static too as well, it'd be cool, it'd be cool also there, but you know, because this is kind of a hassle there. Um, I could have saved a little bit by saying, for example, even dot value of t, right? But this is kind of nice because then we don't even end up, um, but by doing this, we don't even end up with a extra um, object necessarily on the, on the heap there. So it doesn't waste as much memory by doing it static like this here. And I'm getting off on a big time tangent, so I'm just going to save this clear the screen and recompile, rerun. Okay, so I'll just leave that particular code in there right now. All right, um, our next one down, we're checking this char type, which uh, upper A is equal to 65, right? And then an ASCII chart is an uppercase A is equal to 65. So that worked out pretty good on that. Um, now on this next one down here, um, silly. Silly is a character array set to with these particular values. So there's actually seven 
elements, right? In this character array called silly here. So on here, basically temp is a string, right? And I'm assigning a string literal plus, I'm returning the value of, and then the silly character array, right? And then plus dot, 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 right? So this comes down here and says, Jenny, don't change your number, 8675309. It's a good thing I didn't like take up a singing career instead of programming, right? So, but I find this one of the most annoying songs ever. But, but imagine even like phone companies like Verizon or T-Mobile probably block that number right there, 8675309. That'd be available on almost every, but anyway. All right, never mind. So that's just giving you an example of the, the char array type there. And let's come down to the next one here. I'm gonna move my browser back onto the screen up here. Now I have them all listed up here. So here's another overloaded value of, or we can specify the offset and the count, right? Um, so that's what we've got. That's what I've got going down in this next one. So basically it's the same thing, same thing here. Only I want to get the string of the first three elements of the silly char array, right? So we start at index number zero, and then we just want to get that, that next parameter is the count. So that's uh, the next three of them, okay? And then um, plus a string literal with a dash in it, and then plus I'm gonna invoke the value of again there, string class dot value of method, silly, and then I want to get starting at index number three. Now remember the indexes for an array start at uh, zero. So you got zero, one, two, three, right? So index number three is actually the fourth element and I wanna grab four more of them, right? Okay, because this array has eight, six, seven, and then five, three, oh, nine, nine. Can't help just do that little stutter from that song, it's terrible. And never call that zero too if you're gonna put these numbers in a sequence, you just have to do the O, even though it's zero, but anyway. Off topic there. So that gives us a little better, better formatted string here, right? 867 and then dash 5309. Actually looks like a telephone number instead of, you know, just uh, 8,675,309. All right, anyway. Now, um, the next one down, pi is just about equal to, and that's what pi is just about equal to. So good enough for me, right? And pi up here is a double. And so that's returning back the value of a double right there. And the next one down is a normal adult temperature is Fahrenheit 98.6, right? And that is just basically string class invoking the value of on a float normal value there. And the last one is the sun, which is a long value. And I've got that set to 94,510,000. And that one will come down here and tack this string literal, or no, this one here. This big old thing plus the value of sun. And we'll just go ahead and pop up here to read that. So the Earth follows an elliptical path around the sun. At the aphelion, the most distant point, it is 94,510,000 miles away. Okay. And then last but not least, what happens when we pass an object. So right here inside of the value of method, I am just going to create a reference to a new object of the same class, string value of, right? Now, um, let's go ahead and see what came down here. Simple value returned by invoking the two string method. Okay, check it out down here. I overrode the two string method here. Now, um, if you haven't watched my object class tutorial, um, then I highly recommend that. Every single class in the whole entire Java language at some point is derived from the object class. The object class is like the granddaddy of them all and it has a method in there called toString. So you can override it by simply doing something like this, override and then its signature and it has to return a string type and it has to be public, right? So I told it to just go ahead and return the string literal when toString is invoked. So as you can see, the value of, if you pass it a an object, an instance, per se, two as well, two of one, one of the same, tomato, tomato, um, it will actually just invoke the two string method inside of that particular um, object. And so that's what gets returned back there, as you can see. Like for example, if, we, if I go ahead and um, comment this, 
instead of that, we're going to see something like, um, it's going to be like, string value of and then an at symbol and then kind of a hexadecimal representation of where this that object sits on the memory heap right so let's go ahead and save that we'll java c compile let's clear our screen um java and right there all right so string value of and then basically like where that object got created on the heap and basically like a hexadecimal representation right of its memory address essentially so that is that's what's going on there if i had just uh not overridden this method you might be going well all right what on earth is that all right if you've been watching my tutorials you might not be you might be going oh okay this guy likes to use that display that to the screen a lot there but that's actually what's going on the to string since I'm overriding that. It is go ahead and doing that. So yeah, let's clear the screen actually. There we go. Okay. Simple value returned by invoking the to string method. Great. Okay. Um, I'm going to go ahead and close out of this and get this off screen. I'm going to just leave you with some final thoughts there. So uh, one strategy that I regularly use to solidify my knowledge of Java is to browse through the actual source code. Due to some language in their copyright file, I can't actually show the source code in my videos. Now, the source code is contained inside of a file called src.zip, located in, your, in the folder where your JDK is installed. Now, I recommend using Notepad++ to browse the, browse the files. So, for example, um, I have my Java development, my JDK installed to my C drive program files Java. On a Windows based computer, that's where it'll be installed to by default. And then you'll see this JDK 1.8045 folder here. That's just the version of the Java development kit that I'm running Java 8, right? Build like 45. Yours will probably be a greater number than this. Who knows? Java 9 might be 1.9. .9. But anyway, here's this src.zip. Um, file right here and it's a compressed folder and here's their copyright thing which says I can't show you the source code on there but what I can do is just kind of tell you a little bit about some stuff that um, that I like to do there and that is to op open up that zip file there and the string class is in the java dot lang pro um, it's basically in the java dot lang package right so you'll see a Java folder in there and a Lang folder in there. You can scroll down to where you see the string.java. Just open that up using Notepad++ and you can browse through it, look for those various different overloaded methods and see how they all work. It's, it's pretty interesting. It gives you an idea of kind of what's under the hood on that sort of stuff. It'll really solidify your knowledge and, you know, make things a lot easier to understand, a lot less mystical or magical or whatever. So, um, anyway... I'm going to get that off the screen, and that concludes this tutorial. Thanks for watching.